Yo, what's up, Mzansi peeps? Welcome to Mzansi Popular Rides and welcome to the review of the Haval Jolion S. 2023 is proving to be an epic year and Haval is at the forefront of relevance in terms of releasing new variants to the market. Earlier in the year, the Haval Jolion Hybrid was released for the fuel conscious driver and later on, it was followed by this, the Haval Jolion S aimed at those who like something sporty. In this video, we're going to review the Haval Jolion S, launch it, and see what it is like to drive. Cost of ownership, warranty, and service plans will be discussed towards the end of the video. If you're new to the channel and haven't yet done so, please don't forget to like and to subscribe to the channel for more dope content like this. So, is the Haval Jolion S worth the extra premium over the super luxury spec? Well, what are we waiting for? Welcome to another review. One thing we can all learn from GWM is this. It's never too late to go back to the drawing board and improve by rethinking your strategy. Rethink their strategy, they surely did. Just an interesting fact, GWM, also known as Great Wall Motors, has been in South Africa for 15 years. The initial market offering was not as successful. South African citizens wanted safety, luxury and reliability. GWM answered the call and revised their market strategy. Their comeback and current market offering speaks to South Africans so well, it makes us wonder if we were being ripped off all along. Underneath the hood, the Jolin S features a 1.5 turbocharged engine mated to a 7-speed DCT gearbox. This engine puts out 130 kilowatts of power and 270 newton meters of torque. The normal super luxury spec puts out 105 kilowatts of power and 210 newton meters of torque. That's 25 kilowatts of power and 60 newton meters of torque more than the power output of the normal non S models. So how quick is it from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour? Well, I'm not sure if there's any real stats released out there at the moment. However, I personally achieved 8.9 seconds as my best and 9.6 seconds as my worst. And well, to be frank, I did not manage to use the launch control. The vehicle does come with launch control, but for what it's worth, let's launch it and see what it's all about. As you can see, she's not entirely that bad. My average run was therefore 9.25 seconds from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour. Is it good? Is it bad? Well, you be the judge. I think it's reasonable. The only thing that they did not manage to improve is the average fuel consumption, which remains at 7.5 liters per 100 kilometers. If you're interested in the fuel consumption test of the normal Haval Julian, as well as the hybrid, I will leave a link in the description below for the fuel consumption tests. Up front, the Haval Jolin S features some blacked out elements. You have a unique blacked out grill with honeycomb mesh design which distinguishes it from the chrome finish grill on the normal Haval. The lower grill is blacked out to give it that aggressive look. As usual, LED daytime running lights and headlights come as standard. On the side profile, the Haval Jolin S features 18-inch alloy wheels similar to those of the Super Luxury Hybrid. You have blacked out door panel strips, the roof rails and mirrors also take on the black theme. You know what they say, black is beautiful. Keyless entry and 360 degree cameras come as standard. At the rear, you have the S badging to remind you that you are just above the Super Luxury spec. The vehicle features a blacked out lower rear bumper in contrast to the chrome finished lower bumper of the normal Julian. Full LED tail lights come as standard, the tailgate is not electric and the vehicle features a spare tire with a fire extinguisher. 
boot capacity is rated at 430 liters with the seats up and 1133 liters with the seats folded. So what does all of this mean? Well, the vehicle is cooler box and wiener dog friendly. And of course, it is weekend getaway friendly too, with your spouse, spouses, or other spouse. I hope I covered everyone there. Before moving on to the interior, let's look at how the vehicle drives. When driving the Haval Jordan S, the first thing you notice is just how easy it is to maneuver this vehicle in traffic, thanks to its light steering. The seating position in the vehicle is reasonably adjustable for almost all different types of heights. Although the vehicle is dubbed the S, the vehicle is comfortable with a slight sporty feel to it. Don't go there expecting GTI sports suspension. No, then you're in the wrong market, chief. However, I will tell you one thing. You will feel the additional power output. The vehicle is more nippy with a quicker throttle response it's a minor update, but it makes a huge difference. Rivals for the Haval Julian S include the top of the range 1.5 turbocharged VW T-Cross with 110 kilowatts of power and 250 newton meters of torque. The Hyundai Venue with a 1 liter turbocharged engine putting out 88 kilowatts of power and 172 newton meters of torque. The Kia Seltos 1.4 TGDI putting out 103 kilowatts of power and 242 newton meters of torque. The Peugeot 2008 putting out 96 kilowatts of power and 230 newton meters of torque. And of course, the Omoda C5 putting out 115 kilowatts of power and 230 newton meters of torque. I guess you can see where this is going. The Haval Julian S as a package beats this cars in terms of power output pricing and of course tech. If you're ever in the market for any of these cars, do yourself a favor and test drive all of them. You will see for yourself. Moving on to the interior of the Julian S. The Julian S features heated and ventilated leather seats which are definitely comfortable. The vehicle features a futuristic modern interior with comfort and convenience as the main theme. You have soft touch materials and leather upholstery where comfort padding is concerned. You have a 12.3 inch infotainment system with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay capabilities. The Julian S features a 7 inch digital instrument cluster and a heads up display. It does take a little bit of time to get used to how and where everything is in the display, but once you do, you're all set to go. The Julian S features a full panoramic sunroof which adds more space by making the vehicle more airy. The cabin is practical with ample amount of storage compartments. The vehicle features 5 USB inputs, 2 at the rear and the rest at the front. Where the Haval Julian S shines is in the safety department. The vehicle comes as standard with lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, forward collision warning, adaptive cruise control, traffic jam assist and intelligent turning assist amongst other safety features. Rear passengers are treated to comfortable seats with isofix anchor points for the toddler's child seat. The seats also have cup holders for those relaxed driving moments. I must say that there are ample amounts of leg room and headroom. I am 1.86 meters tall and with the front seat in my sitting position, sit comfortably at the rear. We have now come to the end of the video and it is time to address the cost of ownership. With a recommended retail price of 479,950, cost of ownership for the Haval Julian S will set you back 12,151. With an installment of 9,321 at an interest rate of 12% over 72 months. Fuel cost of 1,330, assuming you fill up the 57 liter tank once a month, which should give you around about 760 kilometers, and an estimated insurance cost of 1,500. To reduce your monthly installments, you could opt for the balloon payment. However, the downside of the balloon payment is that a lump sum will be required at the end of the finance term. Just for interest sake, with a balloon payment of 30%, you could see the installment going down to 7,934. 
Once again, my advice is that you should stick to your own lane and buy what you can afford. When it comes to warranty and service plan, the Haval Julian S comes with the 60,000 or five year service plan, whichever comes first, and a warranty of 100,000 kilometers or five years, whichever comes first. With a warranty and service plan of five years, you'll definitely have peace of mind as you drive along in the different modes of eco, sport, or normal mode. If you're in the market for a small to medium-sized SUV, i definitely recommend the Haval Jolin S. The vehicle is feature-packed as standard, has enough power for everyday usability, and has a spacious cabin. And if you really want to buy this vehicle, well, I'd say go right ahead and buy it. A huge shout out to Haval Fury in Woodmeet. If you're in the market for a Haval, be sure to visit them. They normally have a lot of stock. Thanks a lot for watching guys. And if you haven't yet done so, please don't forget to like and to subscribe to the channel for more dope content like this. Until next time.